And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. Weekday, weekend, it doesn't matter. Our guest is a hit maker all day, every day, and is on fire. More Pro Tools 12 winners, got a desk ITL for you. Audio lives matter. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Thanks for dropping by. This is going to be a great show, Herb. Yeah. How you been, buddy? I've been good. We've been stalking this guy for a minute. As soon as we heard he was interested, I know. we were kind of like, he I might know. be a little bit creeped out when he I sits know. with us. But, I know. Uh, he's got great management. Yeah. They, they worked it out. How's your week been? Pretty good. Festive. Yeah. Um, a f- I, festive, that's yeah. a new word. I like, I like holidays that require turkey because I like um, turkey sandwiches for about the next 10 days. And did you get, do you know what itis is? I do. Did you get it? No. It's tryptophan I know, related. I know. I know you know, but we just need to share for the culturally <laughs> inept. So you had a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, I did. Cool, cool, cool. Shall we get on you? with it? I, it was really great. So. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, hi, gang. Really good to be with you. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We just talked about that. Mm-hmm. And for all of our friends who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, take a moment and give thanks. We're certainly thankful to be part of your community. Continued support with your likes and subscribes. If you would, it's so much appreciated and it really powers our show. Uh, also thankful for such great partners. They are Vintage King, the awesome Blackbird Academy, Audio Technica, Aftermaster, Isotope, Fab Factory, Recording Connection, and Avid. Speaking of Avid, Mm -hmm. uh, the Pro Tools 12 giveaway is absolutely blazing. You guys are just killing it. Uh, The details, once again, are two Pro Tools 12 given away each week, three more weeks to go, so make sure you enter. Once you enter, it makes you eligible for the grand prize of an Apogee Suite, which is very sweet. Sweet, sweet. Two different suites. (laughs) Both of them good, though, would you say? Uh-uh. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> enter at pensadosplace.tv forward slash PT12. See that URL right there? That's pensadosplace.tv forward slash PT12. Head to it, hit it, and then maybe Dave will be reading your name as winner. Speaking of winners, you got a couple winners for us? Yeah, we've got Clint Shepard ah. and Takuhiro Yashimoto. Ah. Did you eat dinner there last night? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but let's give them a round of applause. Congratulations. We have people in the audience. Um, so in the, in the next couple of weeks, we'll have an ITL on Pro Tools 12. Master Blaster over here will do that. We'll do that in about a week or so. Um, and I think we're also going to have a special guest on from Avid, and he's going to help build out how you subscribe, how it works with Adobe, and all those kinds of things. So That's all good fun. stuff there. I'm on, I, I'm on Pro Tools 14. 14? Yeah. So you're the only one who has that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do they skip 13 like elevators? No, no, it's... I'm just that far ahead. You've already done yeah. 13. Oh, yeah, yeah. 13. <laughs> ah, cool. yeah, we're moving to 15 soon. No, oh, no joke. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. man. You're incredible, Dave. In I'm fact, glad. 15 requires nothing. It just does everything for you. So you don't have to do it. It has massages built in. Yes. Do you have to be, even be in the same room? Well, you have to have at least a, a, a position on the charts above 50, and all these features kick in on and 15. Then I yeah. see. Okay, yeah. pretty, pretty serious good. stuff. Pretty good. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> Not very funny, but good stuff. Yeah, but, but good stuff. Uh, let's say hello to the healthy Hungarian who heads up corner office. He goes by the name of... <laughs> oh, man. It, it, it never gets old. <laughs> is the drum roll new? I don't remember the drum roll. I had a little something over the holidays. So oh, that's great. I want, I want a thing, David. So here's, here's the problem. <laughs> Chongor kicked me with a left-legged roundhouse kick when we were working out, which has rendered my right arm inoperable. So if I slap him during the show, it's just, it's just me getting back. Thank you for that, sir. You remember that kick? You're welcome. Yeah, where I went, <laughs> and I just sort of fainted. Anyways, you got good stuff for our guest today? So many great questions for the guests this week. People have been wanting this show for so long, so we're happy to give it, give it to them. And, and now he feels really pressured. Our guest is like, oh, God, a lot of pressure. No, I think he's asking for more money. It's, ooh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad month to be asking for more of that. Uh, so we look forward to questions from yeah. you, sir. Um, <clears throat> so this week we're going to do a little bit something, uh, something a little bit different. We're going to uh-huh. have a desk ITL. Why don't we get that all set Let's up? Let's do it. Let's okay, do it. Cool. I can't wait because I'm going to learn as much as anybody. Cool. 
Something a little different. We decided that uh, as Dave and I got ready for this iteration of the show, occasionally we wanted to do a thing called desk ITLs because mm -hmm. there's some things that are mm -hmm. closely held and we want the sort of live experience. So we're going to do one today. Um, welcome to our desk, Aaron Rickman and Ari Blitz from Aftermaster. Aaron is to my far left, your right, and Ari is right beside me. Hey, guys. How you doing? What's happening? Good. Welcome. Good cool, nice cool, to see you, man. Cool. Thank good you. see you, man. Thanks, Dave. Um, before we get to the cool stuff, a couple things. One is... Uh, Aftermaster is somebody we met, we met them last year, yeah. we like the people, we yeah. like the process, we yeah. also understood that sometimes you're on the leading edge, you got to be there and support while it converts. So I had a very interesting experience. I think that in the last month or so we introduced you to the Pensado students, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And one of the products they have, besides Aftermaster being a parent company, they have a ProMaster thing, even though today we're going to talk about Aftermaster mm -hmm. TV. So I wanted to take our student group without us involved at all, introduced them to these guys. I think Maat Hotep came down, Yes. right? He spent time with you. Came to the studio. Yeah. Yep. So good experience with him? What, oh, what yeah. was it like? Great guy, great guy. Yeah. And uh, I think he really enjoyed what we were doing. I called him this morning because I had not talked to him to find out what it was. And, and he literally for about two minutes went off. Wow. He said the mm -hmm. process was cool, the people were cool, which is what we thought. Mm -hmm. He also said that in his view, this is his view, um, online mastering is coming, and that he felt, based on some of the other services, that the software and the quality of you guys' stuff was better than others. And that's him sure. just being, a, you know, if you met Maat, he's not, he doesn't pick favors, he's not getting paid, Absolutely. he's going to judge it because he loves audio. So I was very pleased to hear that he felt that way, and I, I guess there's going to be a hangout. Yeah. Soon, right? Yeah, so what, what, what happens in a Hangout? We're going to do a Google Hangout, and basically we invite everyone to come try out ProMaster, mm -hmm. upload your songs. Mm -hmm. You're going to get back four different versions within an hour. Wow. And um, listen to them. And if, if you want to make some mix changes, re-upload your songs after you maybe boost the snare a little bit. Mm -hmm. But really, it's, um, it's mastering that can be done at any time of day mm -hmm. without hiring an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, and you can adjust. And if you it's can not adjust with, if, wow. if if you need to go back to your mix, you can make changes. Wow. Re-upload it. You don't pay a penny until you're happy with your mix, with your master. Hard to beat that. What do you think, DP? Well, you're like the Burger King commercial where the Burger King guy says something, and the other guy was supposed to be McDonald's just well, you makes know, noises. I'll, I'll, you know, all seriousness, um, I see not just um, this technology, but I see the future of a lot of things that are in our world moving over to the online space and, mm -hmm. and Aftermaster has been at the forefront of that, ProMaster, mm -hmm. and um, they do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that impresses me about them is technology is technology and, and, and having something that really works technically well is a feat in and of itself, mm -hmm. but a lot of times the technology isn't conceived and, 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 and supervised by people with great taste. Right, yeah, and so, that's a good point. So all the great technology in the world, we see it a lot in our, in our profession of mixing. If it doesn't sound good, and if it doesn't make you feel good, and impart some sort of musicality to the end result, mm -hmm. it's just technology. Mm -hmm. We all revere guys like Paul Wolf and, and Rupert Neve, and what we revere about them is not their skills to design a circuit, but their skills to make something that's very musical and usable mm -hmm. over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And it feels to me like the Aftermaster staff has, has done that with this product, and another product we're about to talk about. Well, when we met And that's them, the hardest thing ever. When we met them, part of what you and I remarked about was as much about the process was about the people. Yeah. Because to his point, if the people don't care about it, it's going to reflect in the product. So kudos to you guys. Is why we but bet it sounds while good. we're here. The, the oh. mastering thing, I love what he said because um, I do this a lot in, the, re, in the, you know, the, the old school mastering style where I'll send something off to be mastered and then the mastering engineer, uh, I usually have relationships with them. They'll say, Dave, if you can just do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. I, can, I can get a little more out for you. And what a, what a great opportunity for cats coming along to learn the process, learn how mastering works, mm -hmm. learn how they can enhance their product, and, and, it, and it's a symbiotic relationship because you've got to send good stuff to get good stuff back, and, it, and it, so you, it's a learning curve involved, but it's a wonderful learning curve as you get to experiment and grow. And that's just it. We're, we're music guys. I mean, our, our job is mastering for all the record labels. So we really designed this, and we work with the artists that are uploading the songs mm -hmm. to make sure that they get 
a product that they're happy with. Mm -hmm. We spend the time talking to them, mm -hmm. saying, uh, okay, do this with your snare, mm -hmm. do this with your kick drum, and now send it back into our system. Mm -hmm. And that's how we really make sure that everyone gets that master that they, they need. So, so let's segue now. Aaron, after Master TV, I know part of the thought process of the company has been where these sound applications can live. So after Master TV, tell us about it. Sure, it was the product of all those audio guys and music guys um, being frustrated with watching TV mm -hmm. and the volume level discrepancy with dialogue and explosions and commercials. So they did the craziest thing in the world, decided to make a hardware product to solve it, which is after Master TV. Ooh, sweet. So, so how does it work? Where it's HDMI in, HDMI out. So you take your source, your cable box in, mm -hmm. out to the TV, and that's mm. it, and turn it on. So HDMI in, HDMI out. Turn it on. Turn it on. No settings, no EQs, no nothing. You know, we wondered to ourselves, why do TVs have an EQ on them? Why do they have a football <laughs> game setting? You know, why does anyone want to worry about that? You know, it was it was mastering engineers and audio guys that were like, I just want the thing to work. Right. You know? I just want to come home and turn it on, and that's what Aftermaster TV is. So, so it literally, in the processing and algorithms, it'll smooth out the, the noise. Discrimin T tell me about how that works. So, I mean, everyone knows, you know, you're watching, <coughs> you're watching a me. television pro a yeah. program or a movie, and the dialogue is, is really quiet. They're, they're in a scene, they're whispering. Mm -hmm. So you turn it all the way up. And they're making love. Sometimes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I have to turn my TV up to 85, mm -hmm. you know, to hear, to <laughs> hear the, the, the quiet parts. Next thing I know, an explosion goes off. Boom. And I'm grabbing the remote as fast as I can to turn it down to 40. I do that all the it, time. It, it doesn't Absolutely. stop happening. So this will fix that. So that smooths that out. You'll in between never the pick up the remote again. You can enjoy just watching your program. Because you also know it between commercials and the program. The same stuff, thing. Right? Yeah. We fix that as well. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. And then, and you don't know headphones, it, it adjusts the speakers that you have on your television. Yeah, Correct. so we designed it around the fact that we kind of know how most flat panel television speakers act. Mm -hmm. And so the guys just, you know, they're kind of EQing the speakers on a general level. But the, the cool part is you can plug a sound bar in and still get the same great effect. So it's kind of, it's such a simple product and it's agnostic to whatever the system is, it doesn't care. Right. Um, it's gonna sound great. And it's about bringing that dialogue up closer to the other effects. Um, some of that peripheral stuff that you never even heard before on your flat screen TV speakers, you can hear them, but best of all, it's just comfortable. You don't wake up your wife, your kids, you don't annoy does your it, girlfriend. Uh, does it work on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? It will work on everything. Okay. No, that's the one show. <laughs> <laughs> when it's your favorite I'm show. So. To show <laughs> yeah. And it just struck me that you said Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Which, by the way, Did I watched. I know. I was trying to get a ride when came up last you weren't paying right. attention. Wait, that's, you actually watch it? Yeah, I, I hate to say how know, much uh, I watch um, um, One thing about the company that, I, that impresses me is is it's not just a software um, algorithm that they're using. There's, there's some ex very expensive and very difficult to design miniature hardware involved in this too. Yeah. And that's how they've been able to take um, the concept to many different platforms. And this platform I think is gonna be one of the coolest. Um, it's battery powered. You can, if, you, if, you, if you're addicted to it, you can take it with you while you travel. Wow. That's right. Yeah. And, wow. and uh, I guess really anything that has an HDI in and out, you can so use it So this can work like right? on a computer. Absolutely. Yeah, so we put, a, we put an eighth inch cable in and out so that you can take it on the go with you if you're on the airplane or if you, know, oh, if you just love cool the sound of it. Because we do, you know, I take this thing with me everywhere. I take an Aftermaster board with me on the plane. Um, Ooh, so it's a, it's I gotta a cool go to New York next week. <laughs> I don't want to get one. All right, so we're you were raising awareness now. Mm -hmm. There's a Kickstarter campaign out about it, yep. and you guys look to go to market in spring sometime around yeah, there. Yeah, so we're looking to. This is kind of our our platform that we've designed on. You know, tested different features like the eighth inch, but the final design will be about the size of an iPhone six. Got it. Um, oh, and wow, so that's nice. what we want to bring. That's what we'll be shipping to market from Kickstarter. Um, Amazing. And and price point range. Hundred dollars. Up to 150. There's a pro unit that has two HDMI ins, so you can have multiple be. sources. Can we get some? Of course. Okay, cool, cool. You're Herb Trolley. Well, oh, yeah. oh, I forgot. I can well, get it up. Oh, cool. <laughs> Man, I appreciate it. You mentioned Kickstarter. What is, what is that about? It's, a, it's basically a pre-sale to help us have some buying power for components. Mm -hmm. You know, these companies that are they're building stuff, they're buying their components in the hundreds of thousands of units. Right. So it makes it much more cost effective for them. But for us to walk in, you know, it's it's very difficult to have any buying power. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we're just getting some help from our... Under what? Uh, after Master TV. Okay. Oh, cool. cool. We'll be right there. Here's, here's what we appreciate. Um, 
your commitment to the space. That, you know, listen, we're used to, we stood in the fire and took the heat while we came mm -hmm. up with this new show and we thought it would make sense. And as we find all of our friends who are innovative in the, techn in the technical space, in the audio space, you got to put it out there, you got to test it, see what happens and shape it. And most of the times the people who stand and adjust and listen to the marketplace end up winning. We, we always thought from the beginning this was a bet that made sense. I think this is phenomenal. Thank you. I, 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 We're very excited. Yeah. And, and honestly, yeah. our guys, look, there's 14,000 Pensado students. Sure. They all haven't tried it yet, but they've been talking about it. And they're, they're administrators. There's three guys administrate mm -hmm. it. And they give us back the unvarnished truth. Sure. Like, we don't talk to them all the time. They're not paid. They're not. And to hear their response, I literally talked to him two hours ago just about the ProMaster side mm -hmm. and how enthusiastic he was about it after testing. So maybe what we'll be able to do for the Hangout, we can maybe let folks know and, and they Perfect. can try it online and so on so forth. Does yeah, that the, make sense? The more people trying it, the better. I mean, I think everybody, they, they have to have their music competitive. Mm -hmm. And we offer mastering wow. at such an affordable price that everyone has to try it. Do you have a tentative date for actual shipment? Spring. Spring? Mm -hmm. So we'll get a boatload to give away to our audience? Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. we're doing right. sweepstakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And Dave, um, by that time, this will be a full knob? It'll because be a, we, it'll be a, a Penwick knob. Because knobs place knob. are important to you. We'll make a special knob. I think you. there should be a Pensado version yeah. of this. There yeah. we go. There we go. Sexy. Look at that. Yep. Innovation right here on the thing. <laughs> uh, beyond the other stuff, we so appreciate your sponsorship of our thing. We love Thank the you. relationship. Thank you. Aaron, you kick behind in the video. When you see the Kickstarter video, it's hot. It's hot. We were, I, Ron Gilliard, who works for the company, sent it to me. I was like, man, we need to have them on doing just that. That's so cool. uh, yeah. uh, say hello to the, to the folks and to yeah. the family, we and we thank you a bunch. After Master TV, Thanks, folks, guys. make sure appreciate you check it, it out. All right. Well, we really wanted this guest. We stalked him once we found mm -hmm. out he mm -hmm. was available. He's a Grammy winner. His work with The Weeknd is absolutely game-changing, amongst others. We welcome to our desk songwriter, producer, even sound designer. Yes. It is Ilangelo. Hey, yeah. bro. What's up? Welcome, bro. Thanks. Thank What's up, you. buddy? Fellow What's up, Canadian. Buddy? Dave Faraway. Hey, man. Um, your story of uh, 0 to 60 or point A to point B is just as fascinating as anyone I've ever read. Can you give us a synopsis of how you got from Calgary to Toronto to LA yeah. to the weekend to the Grammys to the... I just never gave up. That's really all. That's what it is. Right? Yeah. yeah. I um, just did music for so long and I'd be writing songs and, uh, you know, my mother would be forcing me to take these lessons and I just hated it. And then she finally gave up and then I started writing songs and then I started producing and then I started mixing. In Calgary, I didn't know any mix engineers. And I didn't know, uh, I didn't have access to any studios, so I built everything. Wow. Uh, and I didn't have anybody to ask or talk to, so I just kind of researched all the material myself. So Sound on Sound magazine, that was a source I would go to quite often. Yeah. Uh, and it came to a point where, uh, you know, I kind of realized, because I had traveled to Vancouver mm -hmm. for uh, a few things, uh, I haven't gone to Toronto yet. Uh, and I was still very young at this point. How old um, you? Well, at the point when I was going to Vancouver, I was in 16, 17, taking like a Greyhound bus okay. to Vancouver, just doing some stuff. But at this point when I moved to Toronto, I must have been 20. Okay. You're really young. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I saved up some money and I worked day and night in Toronto at um, Dreamhouse Studios. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, that, those were like the days, you know because it really pushed me out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I was working in a studio with so many different rooms with so much different music going on. Yeah. And, um, you must have been inspired out of your mind at that point. Yeah. He was terrified because he it's, had a year before he ran out of money. Yeah, I had a year before I was kind of out of money. and. Um, but that'll make you do stuff. That'll yeah. focus you, right? Yeah, so I was doing sessions in the morning, sessions in the nighttime, and I was doing all the work you could possibly imagine. and. Um, I still enjoyed myself too. I don't want to make it seem like poor me. Like I, you know, I still had lots mm -hmm. of fun and I had great people around me. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was, you know, I, I took a trip out to LA and I wanted to take a few meetings and uh, nobody wanted to meet with me. Of course, I mean, Classic I just, LA. me just going blindly, just like spend some time in LA, like let's see what happens. Sure. And uh, unfortunately, nothing really came from it uh, except for a few people told me that what I was doing was never going to work. Mm 
<laughs> and uh, you know, possibly I should reconsider doing something else. And I, I didn't really let that discourage me. I went back to Toronto, and uh, I, that's when, by chance, I met with Abel. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just starting um, the weekend project, and, uh, and we did a few records together. And the rest from there is just magic. It's kind of magic, yeah. yeah. I, I went home for the holidays, and I was like telling my family what was up. They were really excited for me to come back home, and I said, well. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we did House of Balloons, and then everything kind of changed from there. Your family was supportive along the way? It's funny because in the moments I thought they weren't supportive. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that, uh, you know, I thought that they didn't understand me and I had all, I had all these kind of emotions. And looking back, I realized they supported me more than mm -hmm. I could possibly understand at that moment of time. It's hard They're, to see at that point. It's very hard to see, and that kind of tough love they gave me and... Um, you know, really made the distance, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And throughout the process, they've been, I, I realize there's more of a, a personal thing inside me. Mm -hmm. They were extremely supportive the entire mm -hmm. way. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Would you say, would this be an accurate statement? Uh, you mentioned Sound on Sound, which is a great source for me too. Yeah. Tape Op, Sound on Sound, Mix Magazine. Yeah. I, I love all those magazines. Uh, had we not had the internet, could you have gotten to where you are? You, you, you're somewhat of a child of the internet too, right? Yeah, a lot of my research was on the internet. No, I don't <laughs> think I could have. Yeah, right. I really don't. Um, I remember reading Sound on Sound, reading how they mixed uh, Sexy Back, and I was just thinking to myself, like, oh shit, like they were using, you know, these plugins, or they were doing this. And uh, I would go on the music forums and see what people were doing. And it's funny, because I still, I'm still a student, you know, mm -hmm. I'm as, as uh, even, even, now when moving forward forever i think i'll always kind of be a student to some extent but there was a part recently where i was on the forum and i was reading some advice that somebody was saying and i was like you know following them quite you know thoroughly and then they said something that absolutely made no sense and a part of me made me realize <laughs> was this been Sada's place you should have no. <laughs> been, been our I'm site pretty sure it, was. <laughs> it, just, it, it just made me feel a little bit like wow i should probably be a little bit careful what information i consume yes, yeah. and from who it comes from you yes. know yeah it's always been a problem even pre-internet well yeah and as much as we are now receptors you also have to be a filter yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's both that's things, deep, right? I mean, it's true, though, because <laughs> yeah, that's, that's otherwise you true. make yourself really crazy. One of the things that, that I think is um, inspiring about your story <laughs> is um, in being self-taught and also getting to a point where success doesn't stop you from being a student. What, what I find to our guests who sit to my left and our left every week is that the best ones stay curious. Mm. The best ones yeah. are always searching. They never think they get there. Is that a fair statement? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It. it uh, are you agreeing with the part that you're the best, or the part that you're still searching? <laughs> Both. Fifty <laughs> percent, and then fifty percent for a hundred percent. Little guy. Yeah, but you know he's got some. He's hot. He's when he's not hot, right, then we'll bring him down. But right his, now he's his, hot. His talents, <laughs> his talents are right there, man. No you know, that's good. <laughs> yeah. But that that search is look it, i see it in day yeah, yeah. i see it in what we do you so just let me see. talk about this search thing so uh throughout the course of me kind of doing what i'm doing um i had so many different theories and so many uh techniques to creating or to mixing or to producing that i've kind of self came up with uh, i remember in 2012 i devised this entire system of where i was mapping out frequencies of different songs and wow. different keys and i had everything uh, I was, I really went kind of mad, and, uh, <laughs> to say the least. Ugh. And I, it took me a good year, and I really dived deep into it, and I don't even want to go too deep into it now because it's, it's kind of a lot. And at the end of it, I kind of realized that it was all nonsense. It's all just, uh, it, it meant nothing, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's always these different processes where you'll push yourself to try to figure out something and you'll research or, or you'll push, you'll be so curious and sometimes it's not healthy either. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the moments Great. where I've let go and I've just kind of uh, created openly without really thinking has always been the best moments. That's when the magic happens. All the, all the time. Yep. All yeah. the time. Essentially the music guides you and the technical stuff supports the music when it gets the other way, it gets the other way around. Yeah. It can lead to less than positive results. Because you have to have 
inspiration and things be your guide, right? Yeah. You have to feel something and then react to those feelings. Correct. And then not let the support mechanisms control that, yeah. but just enhance it. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. 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 How did, um, how did uh, briefly just describe uh, how you met Weekend and, and how that morphed into like a couple of the biggest songs ever and a Grammy and, yeah. and a Drake song and all kinds of stuff. Um, so we, we just met at the studio. I was just working on something. He came by with a few friends. This is in Toronto? This is back in Toronto in uh, early to, uh, late 2010. Mm. And uh, he played me some records and I played him some records. Neither one of you were known, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, a couple of days later, we did a session. Um, and that session we did Crew Love. Mm. And we did a few other records. Um, <laughs> And we did all of them within just a few hours. Wow. And the thing is, is that nothing, it was, there was no, it wasn't even much of a conversation. Abel came inside the room and it was just immediately I started, I played something on the keys. He started singing something. I had the mic set up right next to me. These rooms we were in were very small. They were um, not, you know, not like a... Like writer's rooms, like little tiny. Very room. tiny, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a like drywall and stuff. It yeah. was like, you know, it was cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he did his thing, I didn't say anything. I, I did my thing, he didn't say anything. And we just created these songs, and it was just a really special moment. And that's kind of, kind of how I work in general with a lot of artists. I'm, I'm at a point where I, I choose not to really speak too much, mm. just allow things to happen. Mm -hmm. So, nonetheless, that's how, what kind of came about. Oh, cool, um, cool. In the new year, came back to Toronto after the holidays, and uh, he had done a bunch of music with Doc. Yeah. And then that's, you know, I'd met Doc previously, but that was the... Uh, Doc McKinney, that was, yeah. you know, that was the first Doc's, time. Doc's my, I told yeah, Doc I said, Doc's well, we got man. so much history. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you Talented know, guy. Uh, they were putting together a bunch of songs, and I came into the mix and um, helped kind of, you know, we all did our part in kind of making it what it is, and mm -hmm. we stuck with each other for months on end, and wow. me and Abel stuck together for about two years total. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, took a little bit of a break, and mm -hmm. then now we're back together again. What do you think? What did you think when you did like the three mix, the three mixtapes, yeah. um, uh, House Thursday and Echoes? The first one when you did it, it got it, it caught some people's attention. Yeah, but you were still poor. Yeah, like did did you did you have any? I didn't think what the I, future I didn't, was going. I'm financially poor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. I was spiritually rich. I was yeah yeah rich. still very much you know. Mm -hmm. When did you when did you get that feeling? Like for me, my first number one record. Um, I thought it was going to be a, a bigger feeling, and it, it, it wasn't. It was just, okay, I did that, let me do another one. Yeah. Because if you did got one, you want 20. Yeah, I, I that, feel that right now. Yeah. Is that what happened? Because <laughs> um, at that moment, that's not what happened, no. Uh, Abel had a very specific vision. He wanted to do three tapes in that one year. Mm. And um, we work very fast together, and we know each other quite well, so it's really easy for us to mm -hmm. do that. Mm. Oh, and. Um, you know, of course, throughout the process, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of people trying to um, work with us. Yeah. And, but we just kept with each other and we focused on that goal and that dedication together and it was perfect. Did, did the rejection along the way, which, which was inevitable, did that, did that strengthen you? How do you? How do you use rejection to move forward with your career? It's something that I struggle with sometimes. I don't deal with rejection too well. Oh, man. Well, what rejection are you talking about? I'm not talking about dating. I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know that rejection. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen much. Yeah. So get to the stuff you understand. Um, the no, rejection saying, early on when we some, know some some people would quit. Well, the thing is, is I'm Italian and I'm really hard headed. <laughs> you know what I mean. So there's really little that somebody can tell me that I don't already know. Sure. Uh, like if I believe in something, I'm very headstrong, yeah. and um, I kind of just know. Um, how I feel about music. I, I love it. I'm like obsessed with it. So nothing could really stop me. Nothing could and if I'm working on something, I'm working on it because I love it. I can't mm -hmm. work on something if I don't. Mm -hmm. And you can hear it. Mm -hmm. You know? So now you're, do you find different locales create different inspiration or you just carry inspiration? Because now you yeah. work a lot in LA. Is yeah. it different when you go back to Toronto? Does there? No. No, same no. thing. The inspiration For comes me, from other places. Everything's just on the inside. Yeah. You it have does the, the earth write songs about snow? Like Not. Jingle Bells. 
Sleigh rides. Football with three downs, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, uh, funny uh, enough, I almost did score commercials, but I'm happy that didn't. Oh, really, gotcha. I don't understand <laughs> snow. Gotcha. What, and, what were some of your influences coming along? Like, oh, like yeah. uh, I read a few of them, and, and, and it's pretty cool the way you've absorbed them and, and, and repurposed so, them, because mm. you don't sound like your influences, because you had like, oh, like. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, so I would just listen to except a music. Except for emotionally. Uh, my, the music that my brother, my brothers would put me on, or music I would listen to. Mm -hmm. um, so early on, I was listening to Radiohead, and everybody in school was listening to uh, I don't know what they're like the mm -hmm. dance CDs or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember even kids kind of making fun of me for that, like, "Who is this?" Because I was like, I had I brought Prince to the gym class, and it was like, we don't want to listen to Prince. And right? Like, Why? How could you not, not you know? want to listen? I to Prince. just didn't understand. It was a huge <laughs> right. disconnect. Right. Um, but man, Radiohead is is time and time again um, a project I always love listening to. Hmm. Uh, is OK uh, Computer your favorite Radiohead record? No, Kid A. It is? Yeah, Kid really? A is hands down Third album? the mm. okay. greatest piece of work. Yeah, I me feel too. like of almost. I just guessed that. I didn't read that. I yeah. knew I knew you liked Creed, but mm. I didn't like Creed. Oh, that's what I said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Yeah, I did. I saying I don't like Creed. I'm just not familiar. I, it was, I said sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> I could have sworn I read you like Creed. But I, I, my influences specifically in, I uh, suppose, like this vein of music that I'm doing, uh, I, I remember when Kanye first released Call the Dropout, I, I listened, I bought it, I read the lyrics as I was listening to the songs. It's massively inspired by that. The Neptunes, I would listen yeah. to oh. everything they were doing. Uh, ADRD. Of course, Absolutely. when I first heard, uh, you know, Light Your Ass on Fire with Busta Rhymes, yeah. that was the moment I knew I was like, I, I'm going to do music because just hearing the sonics and the way they created and the emotions and mm -hmm. the arrangement and the sounds, that is the biggest uh, moment for me that pushed me to seriously pursuing um, mm. music. Mm. Uh, you know, Timbaland, of course, all the greats yeah. I'm mentioning. I yeah. mean, Yep. And what I would do is I would just listening to their music, their songs, and I would dissect it and figure it out, and I would try and emulate it, mm -hmm. study it, download acapellas to learn where things are sitting, where things are placed, mm -hmm. download instrumentals, see where levels are. And this is the kind of process I would do um, to learn. Yeah. What, what age was that? Um, this, was, this was when I was from 16 to, to now. Uh, I still do this now, you know. And, and now extent. you can work with some of those people. Is that a whole other experience? Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing, right? It's amazing, yeah. That, that's, the, that's the part about this space that, you know, we always encourage people to dream. Yeah. Because, you know, to, to have a dream in life gives you something to go for. Yeah. And inspires you and keeps you going. And, and, and even when you get there, yeah. you, change, you change your dream, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah, to some extent for me, I've kind of come to the place where I've realized that uh, I have uh, such a passion and love for music mm -hmm. that that's never going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I've slowly been learning that I'm absolutely not good at a lot of other, other things. <laughs> so <laughs> you welcome to the club. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Life yeah. is yeah. life. I can't figure out mixing. I'm good. At life is whew, that's tough. Well, you, um, you you genius types are that. Right? <laughs> no, no, I'm not a genius. That gives us all. I'm gonna prove to you right now. I'm not a genius. One of the pieces of literature I hate the most, Herb, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's an absolute piece of shit, okay. is uh, John Milton, Paradise Lost. I, when I was in school, I was trying to be an English major, and that's the only course I ever took in college that I just wanted to slip my wrist and quit mm. and just become poor and unsuccessful. I'm so curious where this is going to go. <laughs> That's the inspiration for his album. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. How the fuck can you yeah. make that kind of great music with, with Paradise Lost? And, and notice how much your choice inspired him. Well, I haven't seen this Tourette's kind well, of thing. Of all, <laughs> first of all, his album is amazing. It's yeah. theatrical, it's visual, it's got, it's got beautiful moments. I hate to say that, but the, I don't know how else to describe it. It's got aggressive moments. It's got everything but the just abject pissiness that, that Paradise Lost has. Yeah. It does have some dark moments. I'll mm -hmm. give you that. How did, how, it, how how did, did you get inspired me? by that? Um, now so that, shortly now after every, every we literary finished, person on earth hates me. Shortly after we finished doing the trilogy, I, uh, I kind of just wanted to uh, express myself in other ways. Mm -hmm. And my cousin Joe, uh, you know, is an absolute genius. Mm. Absolutely incredible. And I was speaking to him about what is something that we can do together. And um, 
we were going back and forth, and nonetheless, we came across this idea where we were going to join music and literature together. Mm. Um, mm. So you pick like James Joyce, the Dubliners, or I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> definitely, I, I, I sh you know. Okay, I'm off. I'm I could have definitely, you know, just continued making pop music, but I needed uh, an outlet. Watch to your tongue. Watch your tongue. <laughs> You know, I needed an outlet to create something that was, uh, that I haven't, that Every, I wanted to do. All kidding aside, it's amazing. It really yeah. is amazing. Yeah. It's gotten, Thank uh, you. It's gotten, Thank you. it's gotten unusual reviews, like people that don't normally go to something that deep and, and, and arty, artful. Yeah, really I don't think it. I'll ever do that again, though. Really? <laughs> it Why? took a lot out uh, of I, It just took a lot out of me. And I, and I also kind of just realized that uh, I'd rather make music that resonates with people in the masses. Mm -hmm. So that's been exciting for me working with Abel and working on this new album now. Yeah, I bet. It's like making music that a lot of people want to hear yes. that isn't necessarily glitchy. It's yeah. just great songs. Yes. That's so a I little bit, hold on, that's a little bit hypocritical. Well. Because I got a quote here. Pop today is fucking terrible. Now, it and sounds to me like you're trying to make pop music. Is that hypocritical, Herb? What would you be the judge? No, it wouldn't be because he's trying to make really good pop music yeah, as yeah. opposed to bad pop music. So Correct? when I said that, that was during a moment <laughs> where I wasn't, I wasn't, a, I, I didn't understand the pop music. I thought it was a little bit too, I just wasn't, you know, I mean, I was just a little bit younger, man. I just sure. didn't, wasn't it into happens. it. You know, I was rebellious. Mm -hmm. I was rebelling mm -hmm. against Well, look at my notes here. You said that when you were 16. So you're, you're, a, you're a baby. No, you get that laugh. I made that up. But you know what? Um, all kidding aside, I, I told him I was going to tease him about this. I'm mm. not a jerk. Mm -hmm. Any future guests, don't worry about it. We, <laughs> we plan that. But um, I think it, I think it is a neat, a neat subject to, to try and address because we all want to make music that, that is appreciated by a large number of people. But by definition, that means it becomes popular pop yeah. music. That's all it is. And and there is a dearth of, um, dearth. There is a dearth <laughs> was of, of of really good pop music. A lot of it's formulaic. A lot of it's incestuous, you know. And that, and I think there isn't a lane right now that's that's wide open for really good, really good songs that move you and that do the things that a good pop song should do. I mean, Motown was a pop label. I mean, there's a lot of good pop. It's just it it, it is a little. I think honestly, when I had that kind of point of view, and I legitimately believe that and would preach it, yeah. uh, I, I was just—it's just me rebelling against it, it you know. Place. And and you know, we're doing all the different mixtapes we're doing, we're writing all the music we're doing. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, I was there's the a same lot way. of great I, music be, out there. And to, be, to be honest, I was the same way. I would. I was the guy that my friend. I think you were the same way. I think all was the my same friends way. came to me to, for what to buy when I was like teens and. And I'd I'd fall in love with this record, but the minute all my friends like it, I just give it away. I, I, yeah. I think that, that many, I, I was that way too. I think music is tribal, and I think oh. you have your tribal moments where you gather around this music and you think that music's not cool because your tribe thinks this music is cool. Yes. And what I've found is that in the evolution, it, huh? as people grow, they start to realize that they don't have to identify with one thing or another. <clears throat> they just have to be open to seeing what is good about stuff. And the reality of it is is that a hell of a melody and a hell of a hook yeah. is timeless, will go on forever. <clears throat> it doesn't, it's not bankrupt. Yeah. It actually inspires people. <clears throat> and with today's tools, you now can morph it. One of the things I loved about when I looked at your bio, that it had sound designer as part of it. Mm. And, I, yeah. and I took it to me, and I'd like you to explain it, that here's a person who will take other influences and put them into his personal hopper, mm -hmm. still pay attention to a great song yep. and a great collaboration, but not be afraid of the limitations that move forward. Fair and well, beautiful, right? Yeah. That, that, was, that was unbelievable. You My know. man. <laughs> Game, set, match. Good night. Right. <laughs> Tip your waitresses. Good night. <laughs> Go ahead, um, sorry. Yeah, I, you know, always with music, I've never liked the fact that everybody uses the same sound. Yeah. Um, and I've never, from when I first started making music, people would always tell me, like, it, your stuff is a little bit weird and a little bit different. And um, I was doing that on purpose because I was trying to find ways to do the same things that everyone else was doing with just different sonics. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because over the years, all these things have kind of developed and grown into 
my craft and what I do, yeah. you know. So when I was studying the Neptunes, it was because they were using all these different sounds. Oh my God. When I was studying so Kanye, good. I was listening to all the samples and the way that he would put things yes. together and Timbaland, the way he would do his things. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and, and, and so I wanted to capture that moment and make everything special. Every element, I feel like, has to be special. Mm -hmm. uh, I would think about it a lot before, and now over the years, slowly, it's, it's just um, you develop your own techniques and yeah. methods. And so maybe, you know, writing a song before, I would maybe take one week to do one song. Mm -hmm. And then now I can throw together a, quite a great idea in mm -hmm. half an hour. That's and it's phenomenal. You know what you remind me of a bit? When we have guys in the EDM space on, they are as moved at moving the crowd and things that are instinctive and are performance-based. And they don't get hemmed in by convention. Yeah. They just get to... And what I love about what I hear from you, what I read about you, is that you manage to do that and have structure. Just enough structure that you have pop so songs. So the structure appeal. is what I've been learning and focusing on the la the a recently. lot the past re recently, yeah, uh, for sure. At least at least at least the past year. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Because See, that's, that's scary. Because who gets that down? It's mm. it's the it's the smallest change you can do will make almost the biggest difference. Yes. So nothing I've done is necessarily too different from anything I've ever done before. Mm -hmm. But just having a uh, more of an understanding of arrangements, tempos. Uh, feeling, most importantly, it's, it's about feeling because, I mean, I'm the kind of dude where I've gone through phases uh, of pursuing music where I used to, you know, like on my sessions, everything is like perfectly laid out, yeah, yeah. I, you know. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm starting to realize that it's just actually just more about feeling, that yeah. all that stuff actually. Literally everybody in that chair at yeah. some point in time will say to Dave and I, it's about feeling. Yeah. It's about character. Sometimes the mistake is the thing that stands 100%. out. A hundred percent. Right? Like, let it happen. You know, on movie actors, the correlation they make is, if you take a movie actor that also does theater, when he's on stage in theater, the gestures are big, mm -hmm. so people understand the back row. When it's a movie thing, it can be a raised eyebrow, yeah, or a little yeah, nod, yeah. or a little it's look. It's perfect, right? yeah. Right? That's it's that exactly nuance it. thing that, yeah, exactly. So, so, question for you. Yeah. So, the success comes. Yeah. Um, people sometimes don't understand that there's a process in learning how to handle the success and keep your creativity pure. That, mm. That's a whole other game. I think that for me, I've been fortunate. I haven't had to experience that in uh, such a drastic way. And cool. I think it's because I've been pursuing this for a well over 10 years now. Gotcha. I mean, if I was doing it when I was 15, 16, I'm 28 now. Yeah. You know? So you've been at the grind for a minute. Uh, and, I, and I've gone through, you know, people giving you the hype, like, oh, this is going to be the biggest thing ever. Yeah, and then yeah. Yeah. it not being that. And I've, so I, I'm at a place now, and especially I've been doing meditation lots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of diving deeper uh, internally. Mm -hmm. And I've been, that's helped a lot with everything I'm creating. Mm -hmm. A lot of what I do is based off of intention. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm writing a song, I, I don't try to, I try to really just make sure that I um, fully understand what it is that I'm doing and why I'm doing and, and what, I wanted, what I want to achieve mm -hmm. from doing this. What's, what's the end goal, right? So, so, all right, so take the... Keeping yourself balanced yeah. as you grow. Yeah, yeah. You're evolving as a pop songsmith and tunesmith. Um, you're learning your nuance and your process yeah. and so on and so forth. Um, you've managed to keep the success monster at bay because you've been at I'm it for also a very private. Yeah, I don't, I don't Which really. Which I love. Yeah, uh, I you're, don't. You're people's, st you, you let people in when it's time. Um, nah, I'm a kind of a really loving guy. Kind of, you know, I kind of just. I probably should be a little bit more tighter with that, maybe to yeah. some extent. But uh, you're him. He's the same way. <laughs> but but yeah, I I'm definitely. Um, and I'm, I'm Latoya. Yeah, and Mr. Morgan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have my gatekeepers. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, no, I'm I'm just like uh, inherently kind of very private. I, I kind of want to just have it be about the music well, rather. Well, than the thing I noticed from where I was going yeah. is that on certain records, or at least on the weekend record. There's an executive producer credit, and there's an A&R credit. Is the business side as important to you 
as a creative side? Do you, do you find strength from that, or is that just something that came about with that particular project? Well, what do you mean? Well, you have like some business credits as well to past producer, oh, like, like executive regard, producer. Oh, of course, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah is that yeah. part of the business important to you as well? Hmm. Uh, I, well, I would be lying if I said it wasn't, but I don't think about it. You don't pursue it necessarily. Though. I allow it to be what it is. There you go. And a lot of those credits happen from, from doing more than a few songs on a record and mm -hmm. kind of overseeing and yep. help put things together. Yep, yep. So. Got it. Makes sense. Um, one of the things that, that I, I love about your work is a lot of us use effects, but you use effects differently than anybody I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's a bold statement, but I stand by it. Uh, when you use reverb, you don't use reverb to just make a make a, a sound sound like it's in a real space. You make you make the reverb as important as a synth part. It beca your your effects become another another synthesizer part, another piano part, another mm -hmm. bass part. Um, how did you get that philosophy? Because it, it, your, your things take on a bigger than life. Your your music takes on a bigger than life um, sound, but you're not you're not thinking of reverb in traditional ways. How did that develop, and, and how do you use that? I'd I want to learn that. Hmm. First of all, am I, I right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I suppose. So when I'm writing a song, if I'm playing a synth or if I'm doing a drum loop, I find ways to make it inspiring for myself. Hmm. So I'll do those by, you know, as I'm putting together the kit, I don't want to be too technical at this point. I just want to throw the idea down, and then I'll quickly take a second where I'll maybe throw a reverb on a kick drum. And I'll, I won't, you don't premeditate it too much, you just kind of go and you do it, and it's very fast. I yeah. mean, this is not like a stop 10 minutes later, I'm doing this, it's, it's, mm. it's one process. Mm. Then by doing that on the snare drum, I'll do this. Then we'll do a vocal, and I'll want to flip it and do this with it. So to make it interesting and inspiring, you know, I'll throw a delay with it and I'll take the dry signal and let's say I'll throw it a little bit lower than the delay and I'll put the feedback up and create these kind of textures. And I've come to realize from, uh, I was helping a buddy out a couple months ago explaining to him my process. And he was like, well, hey, why are you doing this? Or why'd you, why'd you just throw that reverb or delay up or so forth? And I didn't really know. I was just kind of doing it because I wanted it to sound. I have something in my head and I mm -hmm. just do it. Mm -hmm. Kind of realized that I kind of just do what inspires me. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so that's why I throw all these kind of stuff on it, because it just needs to inspire me. So there's been records where I'll have multiple reverbs on a vocal. One will be a really short gate maybe, and it'll be really tight. And I'll put a little bit of a pre-delay to push it out and just give it a little bit of space. And then I'll throw another reverb and it's a long haul, and then I'll put a delay through that. And, mm. and it's not that I'm doing these because um, it's just I hear it and I'm kind of just able to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wow. so cool. Yeah. As, what's interesting to me, Herb, is, is his influences are all dry. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you ever think about that? Uh, yeah. Pharrell was well, dry for years and years. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. yeah. But, 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 but well, no, you don't think of some, it as wet or dry. I'm sorry. No, no, Stevie had some pretty dope records with some, you know, yeah. really, yeah. You know, really yeah. you know, plates. Yeah. But you don't think of it as reverb, you think of it as texture. I think that's the, I don't even I that's label my hand. tracks when I... Uh, so I have my lead vocals and they typically go to a group called Lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll have things organized in a system where it's, it's for me, it, it's really easy and fast. When I do my effects, when my sends, I don't even write uh, reverb, delay. I try to keep it as simple and open as possible. I'll mm. just write lead effects one, lead effects two, lead effects three. Uh, and I do that because uh, I don't even look at it like a delay because on that delay, I may have that running to a chorus or doing whatever it needs to do, yeah. side chain to this, to that. If I start getting caught up in, uh, into, you know, names, then, then it starts maybe, I, I, I don't know. Well, you're, you're not a person creatively, I'm, this is my feeling. Um, the last thing that you need to be creatively is bogged down. You you need to be able to roll. Yeah. The way you need to roll. If I'm in a, that's why I have to engineer my sessions. That's yes. why I kind of mix it to a certain point is yeah. because. Watch your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go. He's not, you saying, do your thing. You yeah. use, he's not saying that you should use 
that you shouldn't use mixers. Mixers provide a valuable service. Oh, oh I've, yeah, I've worked with some great mix engineers. Don't get me wrong. I, I brought a song to John Marie. Audio lives matter. Yeah. I brought a song to John Marie Horvat. Sure. Oh, I love John and Marie. this dude took what I gave him and just blew it out the park. He's a Unbelievable. Beast. He's a beast. Yeah. But see, the problem that I deal with me personally as a producer is I have things to a certain level. I really spend the time to make it and bring it home. Yeah. And it's if you want to look at it like cooking, it's like I already have it cooked. So sometimes when I give, I've learned in my experience when I give out my records to different mix engineers, yeah. it's like it's already cooked. And, right. and a lot of the times it possibly can come back overdone. Over, overdone. You know, oh, yeah. great metaphor. Meat's and, tough and the, the pastry's and not flaky. Okay, we got it. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, just for those who didn't, I know you did, but you know, some people don't understand. No, I, you know yeah. what? I support that 100% because we've said this a lot on the show. In today's world, there's not as much a distinction between the processes. In the 90s and, and 80s, we broke it down into different parts. The, we had arrangers, we had writers, mm -hmm. we had this, we had that with this. But now, it, it, with the technology that we have, you don't, there's no longer a need to separate all the different parts. When you when you put the first track up and you put a plug in on it, that's mixing right then and there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. So it's definitely a different world. As you prepare your batter's box arm, Chongor, you got a question from our audience over there? Got some really great questions. This first one's from Vincent Paragano. If you could go back and talk to yourself when you were starting out, what piece of advice would you give yourself? None. I wouldn't say anything. Yeah. There you go. I, I have to be honest. Um, advice that I give to other producers, oh yeah, I would, I have something, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not about the equipment whatsoever. So when mm -hmm. I was, you know, when I was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, I mean, for a lot of years, I thought that I needed certain pieces of equipment to create um, professional music, high quality music, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. And, I, and now I realize that that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, my setup is the most minimal setup you could imagine. Mm. Uh, even when I'm recording, it's I'll use whatever microphone's available. Mm. So I would mm. I would let you know anybody aspiring doing music. I would just tell them like, you know, don't think you need anything to create as everything's available online. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of stuff you can get for free. I wasn't able to afford a lot of stuff. I had right. to download you know programs that were cracked and so forth and. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say don't get caught up in having certain pre's or certain keyboards or certain sounds. I agree 100%. Yeah. Give us another one, Chongor. From D. Mark. When you're creating wait, your... Wait, wait, From Dean Martin? From D. Mark. Oh, you wouldn't even know who Dean Martin is. <laughs> I, I didn't know... It's <laughs> weird. Second time of the day, right? Uh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> when you're creating your drums, what is your general workflow? Are you one to layer samples or will you try to get the most out of a Ooh, certain sample? Great question. Oh, I'll... I'll, I'm layering, I'm going. And I have found in my experience that when I begin to start, when I begin to start doing that, when I start trying to mix as I create, yeah. it it's, doesn't make any sense at all. Hmm. I feel like the best thing for me to do is when I'm creating, I'm throwing down this kick drum, throwing down this, throwing on that, accenting one hit to another. So that's, you know, that's my process. Do wow. you use many loops? Like no, okay. I, I stray away from that entirely. Mm -hmm. And that just goes back to, I suppose, like a sound design aspect where mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy certain rhythms of loops, mm -hmm. but I try to just kind of create something special every time. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, Mr. Pitcher Man, Mr. Athlete, are you stretched? Are you warmed up? We got done. He's going to kick my ass. Right. I know he is. Well, don't. I mean, come on. Don't give in so, so readily. Shh. Jesus, come on. Buck up, buddy. Buck up. I just always <clears throat> vocal, vocal, vocal. Can we get bass, some liniment from the kick, things I can put on his arm? Like I never right. win anything. All right, I can, we'll get you a prize. No matter what happens today, we'll get you a prize okay. later. Okay, okay, ready? Okay, thanks. You're, like, you're like an enlightened kid in private school. You get a trophy for being in the race. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All man. right, here we go. Batter's box, Dave Pensado's pitching first pitch. Accordion. Jesus. <laughs> vocal. <laughs> vocal. <laughs> that threw him off. Curveball. That was a bop. That was a curveball. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> vocal. Nothing Good on word. vocal. Great answer. <laughs> so back to you. <laughs>
<laughs> My man, cover. He's Canadian. WWE um, tag team match hey, right brother, there. Well, man. hold on. Just give me a second. <laughs> I, I, when I say vocal and I say nothing, it's not true. I put a million different things on my vocal. I mean more, it's, it's more, I record completely direct, uh, nothing, and it's just more about capturing the right performance. Ah, there you go. Even better. Very cool. Bass. Nothing. A good answer. Uh, I'll be, and I say that because I create uh, a lot of my subs and bases. I create, and I'm able to control the the decay, uh, and so forth. So I usually get it at a great spot from the source. Uh, There's nothing needed sense. after that. Compressor. There's a couple. There's a great plugin called Homicide, and they. There's there's a distortion part of it that you can turn off, but there's also a compressor part. And that's uh, quite extreme that I really enjoy. Mm. Pro MB from Fab Filter is absolutely incredible. I love Fab Filter. Mm. Mm. Okay, don't show off anymore. Stereo bus. Um, I love S Slate Digital's tape. Mm -hmm. Cool. And oh, I'm not done. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, I, running, he's running up the score, Herb. I like doing all my work with nothing on the stereo bus, but when it comes down to bouncing, I very much enjoy putting uh, tape on it. And I, I put Pro MB and I do a, a multi band where I gently kind of smooth out and bounce and things. Mm. And uh, Ozone, of course, is, yeah. is, uh, is a great um, software. And I, I enjoy Isotope. It. Yeah. Okay, I want, I want a plug in name Reverb. Altiverb. Guitar. A great, a great, a great melody. I, you know. Yeah, that works. Okay, piano. It's like songwriting stuff for me. You know, like okay. a piano. Like uh, I don't treat any piano the same way twice. It's mm. just more about playing it right. Um, if your studio caught fire. What, what one piece of gear would you rescue first? Can't say hard drive, computer, it's gotta be a piece of gear. It's the only one I have. Is, is my computer the only one? Take points off of that. <laughs> well, so here, there's a couple of things here. Um, you did good, and uh, as your partner, I Thanks, love that. Sir. I try. He's also Canadian, <laughs> and in lieu of me singing, oh, Canada. Oh my gosh. Uh, congratulations, well done. Thanks. I, I think you did good, though, we, we, we did good. Couple things before we go. Um, you have got to join us on some of our endeavors when we run around the country. Yeah, yeah. I would love, we would love to have you. I think people would love to hear from you. Is that of interest to you? I mean, for years I've been wanting to be a part of this show or just find a way to help people, trying to teach them and maybe just try to show them that it's, um, you know, behind all the smoke and mirrors, it's, it's actually very simple. Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, I got some ideas for you. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, do I have some ideas for you. I told uh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, secondly, um, thanks so much for gracing us. This is yeah. it was an important show to our audience, uh, inspiring, I think, to us. Yeah. Um, and probably the most seminal question, um, are Mr. Morgan and LaToya real people, your management team? Because I have emailed them for three years because they have such a, you all have such a great roster. Yeah. And they are so responsive and so professional, but I just don't know if they're real people. It's really amazing. They are real people? I can confirm for you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I feel I feel because I was I didn't know what to do. I was I was a little creeped out by it because I, I like to go low key, <laughs> but they are like stealth, man. But they get I it guess, done. I guess I guess us Canadians are kind of low key. Aren't we, we are Canadian. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, what a great chat, Dave. Take us home. Whew, that's a tough one for me. Um, I'm sitting here thinking like, how can I tie all this up uh, in a neat little bow? And and what came to my mind first was. Collaboration. I think moving to Toronto with no safety net, what that did was that, that gave Elangelo the opportunity to collaborate with other people. And what that does is it, 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 it confirms and reaffirms that the things you do right because you see other people doing it that you admire. And then it points out some of the areas where you've got to improve. And collaboration all the way up to working with Max Martin, collaborating is, is a big and important part of the process of making records, wouldn't you say? So I'll give you the last word, one sentence. Collaboration. Collaboration is key. There I'll tell is. you, really. Yeah, I think so. Say too. goodnight, Sam. 
All right, guys. Thanks for hanging with us. Be fearless, gang. Bye -bye. See you next week.